today you have a Rangers photo op at 5 o'clock with Karen, Richard Horvitz, David Fielding, and Vernon. Very cool. And then tomorrow y'all have a panel at 3.30. So other than that, we're just signing today. I started Comic Cons probably April. Um, May uh, Memorial Weekend was his first show, Comic Foods on Houston. Yeah, and th this is my agent, Zach. So, uh, in, in the Comic Con world, he keeps me going everywhere. I got back, I was in the Middle East for four years. I got back April 1st this year. Got together with Zach, my buddy Walter Jones. You guys know him as Zach the Black Ranger. Kind of hooked me up, and um, he was like, hey, you know, you need to come check this out because we still got fans everywhere. And I was like, it's been 21 years. What are you talking about? We have fans everywhere. And he's like, no, really. They all got bigger now. They're all training their little ones in on which show they're supposed to be watching. And uh, it's been crazy. You know, uh, England last week. We were in London. We got uh, two weeks in Australia coming up. <laughs> There's no prepping for it, man. Um, it's an onslaught. But uh, it beats being in the desert with a bunch of uh, sweaty guys, let me tell you that. People with cameras instead of rifles. Uh, I love my brothers, I love the soldiers, I love the Marines, but uh, the fans are a different breed unto themselves. What does that mean for you to walk around with this thing here? Number one, it means don't drop it, because this thing came from anarchy. Um, and about 35 people that gifted it to me would kill me. Uh, number two, it means that, I don't know, maybe like there's a couple hundred million people out there that might have had something to say about it. There's people watching. It's like that song, somebody's watching you. I feel like that all the time. Checking behind the mirror, checking the shower curtain. Who's watching now? I was gonna say John, my hero. <laughs> What's up, brother? I got a suit, I'm bringing it to you to get signed. You are my hero. Bring it by, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. All right, man. Playing a 10-year-old boy has been an amazing experience. And to say that he was a hero, I think it just shows, I guess in a, in a small and yet very big way, how much we all are heroes in our life. When you're able to follow your goals and also um, work with others, keep your friends, not step on them to reach your goals, um, I guess if you're able to do that, you are a bit of a hero. Favorite superhero? Yep. Probably the Hulk. Uh, and then that's partly because of Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno, but also because I just identified with it. You know, bringing out that rage could be a bad thing, and you make it a good thing somehow. So yeah, I'm, I'm a romantic. Definitely the Hulk for me. The Green Arrow. Blue Beetle. Um, Wolverine. My favorite superhero? Favorite superhero has got to be Batman. Captain America. I had a, a lot of heroes growing up, and they actually would structure the path that I would take for my life because I became one of the heroes that I used to look up to. Uh, my parents, number one. Um, my dad, uh, amazing role model, Marine Corps. My mother was amazing. Uh, first female cop ever in, uh, in, the, in the local city of Roswell, New Mexico. Bad to the bone. I mean, uh, tough parents, but I had, I had all the other stereotypical stuff too, man. It was Superman, Incredible Hulk, Spider-Man, Batman. I am Batman. Ay, 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 ay! Sword on, the Power Rangers are in trouble! Some of my heroes growing up, uh, well, the six million dollar man, who today would be worth probably like a hundred thousand dollars. Grew up, uh, you know, watching pro wrestling. I loved uh, looking up to the pro wrestlers as um, heroes as well. You know, it was uh, different wrestlers. Leaping Lanny Poffo was one of the first, who nobody knows because he didn't win very many matches, but his style influenced me because he thought outside of the box and did flying head scissors when nobody was doing that. That was cool. The Ultimate Warrior came in, I'm the ultimate warrior! Dude, I was totally into that, man. Just that boom. I was just like, dude, this guy's so intense and fell right into that. Superheroes for me, there's only one true superhero, and that's Superman. If you take someone like a Batman, awesome hero, not superpowers. Favorite superhero? Uh, gotta get to one Wolverine. Big comic book fan, I grew up on Marvel. Ghost Rider was my lifelong favorite character. Big Spider-Man fan. At one time, I uh, I had the regular uh, weekly pulls. I go and I get the Hulk and Secret Wars and all that stuff. My favorite superhero would be Flash. Because he's the fastest dude. And he gets the job done fast. <laughs> all right, my favorite hero. Uh, I guess the most inspirational person in my life has to be 
Jim Carrey. Batman, because he's the best. Superman, because he's better than Batman. Superhero, the movie Man of Steel. Hero, kick ass. That is a great movie, by the way. But they're not, you know, kick ass isn't a superhero, he's just heroic. If you're a vigilante, you are heroic. The Man of Steel, that is super power. But you can't say superhuman strength, because he's not really human. Jim Carrey was my hero growing up. There had not been one person on this planet in this living existence that has inspired me and influenced me more than Jim Carrey. I do have the largest Ghost Rider memorabilia collection ever. Like I have a room that two display cases and a wall, every statue, every everything that's ever had his copyrighted image, trademarked image put on it that I know of, I own. Um, and I don't know at what point in life I'm gonna quit doing that, but right now I can't stop. If they come up with something new and it's the only thing I don't have, I gotta get it. Having said that, as an adult, I find Deadpool way cooler. Deadpool is my favorite character right now. But we're hoping to meet John Reese davies he's, he's been a big hero of ours, and Crystal and I have just been big fans since Sliders, Indiana Jones movies, Lord of the Rings movies, but just he's a hell of a nice guy. Watch him, he's so great. How are you? My name is Jim Martin. Jim Martin, how are you? How are you? And this is my wife, Crystal. I'm a puppeteer. I've worked for 20-some years on Sesame Street. I got to see you. And Crystal and I are great fans of yours. You married him. I did, she did. I she did. did. You made an honest man of him in the end. <laughs> yes, she did. I'm glad of that, because puppeteers no, need every don't. bit of string you can pull. <laughs> Behind Jim Carrey, I would say, Brett the Hitman Hart and Roger Rabbit. I learned a lot about myself. Uh, I always thought I was a pretty positive person, but um, I didn't understand the power of positivity. Ash would never say, oh, we're never going to make it. You know, um, he always said, what, what can we do to get out of this? You know, how are we going to get out? And he would figure things out. I just didn't realize how important that was. I mean, I guess I did subconsciously, but it really um, made it more important to me. Someone like Michelangelo that did so much incredible sculptural work way back. People like Leonardo. There just aren't the skills um, that they had back then now. Who's my favorite superhero? I'd have to say it's Batman. I mean, hello. Probably. Alec and Peter Cushing. Because they were actors. They were, they were real actors that could do anything. I, I grew up with, with a basketball in my hand from, from the age of five, so I, my idols were Jordan, um, Luke Longley from Australia, uh, you know, um, Larry Bird, all those guys. You know, I, I grew up living and, and breathing basketball, and, um, you know, uh, if, if you want a superhero, I'll, I'll say Superman. Like Peter, um, I would say Alec Guinness. Now, Alec Guinness was a fantastic actor, you know, that I admired tremendously. He could do absolutely anything. And I'm sure you've heard this before. I'm, I'm sure other people have told this story better than me. But I'll say it again. You know that Alec Guinness was asked to do Star Wars, and his agent was absolutely horrified by this and said, no, 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 you, mu you mustn't do this terrible science fiction film. And Alec Innes said, no, you're wrong. I want to do Star Wars because this film is all about the triumph of good over evil. And he was right. You know, and it's a wonderful film, a new hope, and isn't that what we all need today? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm the same as Michael, because I come from a different background. Um, I was interested in science and technology as well as, as, as making things. So although I love films and science fiction and read science fiction, I was probably more influenced by engineers. Um, you know, even like Gensenbauer King and Brunel. People who, people who found new ways of doing things. So that was the inspiration for that. Like Jabba, just about everything we did on Jabba was research and development. And, uh, and you've got Bert Rutan, and unfortunately his spaceship just crashed which is such a real shame, um, scale composites. So the people who, who push the limits, the boundaries, materials and technology. So. I think probably
probably my parents had the biggest effect on my life. Um, they were always very supportive and somehow they managed to have their own careers and be there for everything that I needed to come to every show I was in or every soccer game. Um, I at first didn't think I could be a parent because I didn't think I could live up to that. Uh, so I think they were my heroes. Um, the, definitely the most positive influence. I have four parents and um, I'm incredibly lucky. It's very easy to point out uh, celebrities or, or uh, pop culture icons as heroes. I mean, personally, my, my favorite all-time hero is Captain America, the, the character of Captain America, because Cap is all about uh, fairness. You know, everything you know should be done the right way. Batman, I think, is the coolest superhero. He's got that, you know, the cowl, the cool cowl. I grew up with the TV show, of course. I ended up being the art director of Batmania magazine in high school. I ended up working for Neil Adams, the greatest living Batman artist. So my Bat bona fides are pretty good. And um, yeah, I would say definitely Batman. It's definitely not a superhero. It's definitely going to be Roran Stronghammer from Aragon series. He's a fantastic warrior. All he wields is a hammer, and that's all he needs. Just my favorite superhero? Uh, my favorite superhero would probably have to be... I'm kind of kind of torn, because I kind of want to say Wolverine, but at the same time, my friend's dress is Wolverine, so I don't want to say Wolverine. <laughs> I'm going to go with an unlikely uh, choice today. I've had uh, many notable people who inspired me. Uh, today's selection is Dolly Parton. Uh, over the past several weeks, I've been uh, revisiting a lot of uh, Dolly's greatest hits through YouTube. I watched her... Uh, 1990 Christmas special, and I'm going to rank it up there on the Foley top 10 list of all-time favorite uh, Christmas shows. There's just uh, such a warmth to uh, Dolly Parton. It's very real. Uh, I love her songwriting, love her songs, and her ability to touch people and uh, continuously give back and make the world a better place for all mankind. Uh, bucket list. I need to meet Dolly Parton. Uh, so maybe uh, you guys can make that happen. I love you, Dolly. I'll say Bishop, the black. War Machine. Because back then, there wasn't really any, anybody black as like a superhero. What In my comic book that I had, like, you know, my brother, he he passed him down. So that's why I had I had Bishop. Bishop, actually, Bishop, um, the welcoming Bishop, War Machine, we know of Iron Man, and Power Man. I, I like watching martial arts movies. All of them, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal. Um, even outside of martial arts, just action movies. I'm all about the action. He's not a superhero, but Deadpool, all the way. The Merc with a mouth. You can't beat him. He can't die. He kills everyone for money. You can't beat that. And Lady Deadpool, who's trying to hide. Lady Deadpool is trying to hide over here. And of course, Wolverine. He's the best at what he does. What he does is a very That's nice. That's a lot. Deadpool does it better. He will leave me alone. Cartoonist heroes are uh, Harvey Kurtzman, who created Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine was one of my early influences. Warner Brothers cartoons, Tex Avery, Chuck Jones, uh, Frizz Freeling, Frank Tashlin, uh, all those guys. Um, I grew up watching those cartoons. I was lucky enough to get a job at Marvel, work in the bullpen. I learned from all the artists that were working there. It was like going to school and I got to be an anchor. I kind of owe everything I'm doing to being uh, flexible and, uh, and being able to adapt to different styles. You know, I think, I think there's good superheroes and there's bad superheroes. Uh, I frankly am kind of bored with superheroes. Superheroes growing up. Let's see. Uh, Batman and all the uh, villains in that. It would be the uh, Adam West Batman that we watched a lot of. So a lot of those uh, villains and characters are really big and we enjoyed seeing as, as children. Uh, it's really good to play a villain as opposed to just a, a regular everyday type guy. So I enjoyed that a lot. You know, an evil clown is really... <laughs> more appealing than anything else to play with, you know? Every time I go somewhere where it's cold, I'm like, okay, let me wear something warm. And then I end up sweating bullets. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm Eric. 
What's your name? Eric? Eric. Nice to meet you. I'm nice awesome. You, man. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. Oh, it's great to see you, man. I'm a big fan. I've been watching you since 1993, man. Like back in the day. Back in the day. When I was first told about the job, I thought it was just going to be like a regular audition, like 500 actors going down there, read some lines and never hear anything. But when I went down to the Saban building, I found out it was just me and another actor, and that they were planning on filming it right away. And I was like, oh, well, that's pretty interesting. I'd only been in Los Angeles for about a month and a half, so uh, after going to Los Angeles and trying to work in the movies, after a month and a half, I had a, I had a gig on a TV show, so that was pretty wild. <laughs> that's uh, actually me in the makeup chair getting ready to go onto the set to film. Uh, they had shaved all my hair off glued my ears back and uh, applied some makeup to the to the uh, eyebrows there. I feel that the show was a very positive effect and I, I think that's something to be very proud of. The fact that the show itself um, and the characters instilled a lot of good values into the youth uh, that they carry forward today. I think that's that's the one thing that I'm uh, the most proud of in the, sh in the show. I come from a family of women, so obviously my mom, I have five sisters, um, my dad and my brother, like those two guys were my guys, you know, in my life. Um, but as far as superhero goes, I actually love He-Man, I love She-Ra, I love Wonder Woman. Those were kind of the people that I, I raced home every day to watch She-Ra. Like if I missed She-Ra, it was a bad day. So that was my favorite. My real heroes are the people that, that do uh, all of like our emergency services, our police, the firemen, uh, the EMTs, that are there for people in real emergency situations. Uh, so those are the kind of people that I look up to. I wanted women to uh, be empowered. So I obviously love like Wonder Woman and She-Ra because they were strong, you know, they could kick butt just like the guys. So when I got on Power Rangers, it was very important for me not to be so much the girly girl. I actually wanted to be more sassy. I wanted to be tough. I wanted to be able to hold my own. And um, I was a dancer, so it was very important for me to learn martial arts and really look like I knew how to do martial arts. I didn't want to be like, ah, you know, I wanted to be like, ha, huh, you know? So that, that's kind of my thing. I like strong women and I, I have always aspired to be that. When I got the part, I was part excited and I was part nervous because like you said, Trini had a huge following of people. Those were huge shoes for me to uh, fill. But I thought about it and was like, you know what? I know that she would want me to do my best and she would want me to carry on the legacy of the Yellow Ranger. I was gonna say Deadpool. I'm gonna say Deadpool. I'm gonna say Dakin, because nobody ever says Dakin. And they don't even understand what kind of powers he got. He got the ability to change people's uh, uh, feelings through uh, pheromones that he throws out. And he also got the claws or whatever regeneration it like that. So my heroes in real life are uh, singer-songwriters, predominantly and specifically Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen uh, is a man like Bob Dylan or Paul Simon or John Lennon who can write a song very simply and affect people's moods. So anyone who can write a song that can can evoke emotion like that, that's a superhero because you're evoking emotion. Well, my name is Jason Casey. I'm a professional illustrator and muralist. I've been drawing since I was seven years old and one of my biggest inspirations or the big inspiration for myself when I was a kid was my first comic book which was a Spider-Man comic book and pro wrestling because to me pro wrestling in the 80s was like a live comic book the characters are very one-dimensional good versus evil and I just fell in love with it and uh, I stayed a fan my whole life and Mick Foley is here and I drew a portrait of him uh, no man in this business dedicated I think more to the crowd to the audience to the fans by giving his body and I don't think a better man came out of the business as well in terms of uh, a heart and for him to write two autobiographies that became number one New York Times bestselling, like that's just unprecedented, you know? Like, he really just, he made his mark. For a guy who was told from the beginning that he'll never make it, he just beat the odds. And that is probably the greatest story and inspiration that you can have for anybody who's trying to make it in this world and become something. Because we have a lot of detractors and McFoley's there to say, hey, you know what? I did it, so you can too. This is Mick with Jason, and uh, I, I, it never gets old when somebody uh, takes their time and talent uh, to depict you on uh, on any type of medium. It's always flattering, man, especially when it's this well done. Thank you. A lot of times you have to whine and tell people it's great when it's not, but this is really <laughs> great, man. How you to get a picture with this? It's pretty bad, right? You, you talk about something I grew up with. That's this right here, right? 
That's crazy. That's pretty cool, right? Let's go. Good job. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Austin. Awesome. Like this, this is what I grew up with, right? Just take your time getting it. Alright, so now, if you want to turn on the dash, just say the words kit activate. Kit activate. I mean, this was pre the Zord. There's no teeth on it. But it's look, still pretty look cool. Look above you, there's an orange and blue switch right over here. Turn those two on as well. I remember I was a teenager and I wanted this car. And uh, Michael Knight was bad. That's what I remember. Um, but this is pretty cool. I mean, what kid wouldn't want to drive this car? I didn't know that like five years later I was going to be driving a dinosaur. If you had told me that, I would have laughed. People had, you know, stick to what they want to do for life. I think that's a kind of a heroic act to start with. Well, first of all, mostly creative people of any kind, no matter what they do. And also, you're kind of giving something back, even though you're, whatever it is, if you're a musician or an artist or a, a baker even, you know, you're using whatever gifts you're embodied with, you know, for, for more than just yourself. I think that's a heroic thing. One of the persons I look up to the most when I was a kid was my dad, man. My dad was Mr. Joe Discipline. And, uh, you know, my dad was one of those guys, uh, he got drafted by Philadelphia Phillies and stuff. It was a good pitcher there from the South College in Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, grew up kind of like the school of hard knocks. And then, then his life went on, you know, uh, I started bouncing and lifting weights. And then a friend of mine, Ed Sharkey, came in who trained Jesse the Body Ventura. And I saw how Jesse Ventura did, and how great he did in pro wrestling. So, a guy named Rick Rude, myself, Hawk, and Smash Demolition went to the same wrestling camp as Jesse Vadi Ventura did. And uh, then I kind of lived my life dream of becoming a pro wrestler. And now, kind of, some kids out there, I'm kind of like a superhero, someone for them to look up to, man. So, you never know in life on which road it's going to take you. You never know if you're going to be the follower or the leader. Both is great. My number one superhero during my lifetime was my brother Jack. He, he was the real talent in our family. He was two years older than I am and he was killed in France in World War II. And after fighting all through the mountains of the Casino and Anzio, he was killed in France. Twenty years old, he was an infantry sergeant and I miss him to this day. And he, he was my number one hero. Of course, I had other heroes as, uh, as ball players. Lou Gehrig was my big hero when I was a little kid. Not Babe Ruth, it was Lou Gehrig. And uh, of course, down through the years, I, I've looked up to some very important people in, in my life and uh, people that I feel maybe have guided me a little bit through uh, what I have attained. But, uh, but like I say, no one could compare with my brother Jack. I would say my biggest hero uh, in the voiceover world was Paul Fries. Um, when I heard Paul Fries, I was 10 years old at Disneyland, and we went through the Haunted Mansion. And Paul Fries was the, the ghost host. And when I heard that voice, it says, you know, Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted Mansion. And when I heard that, uh, right away I was like wow what a great voice I'd love to be able to do a voice like that and so that was at the age of 10 and then I, I kind of followed Paul Fries's career and uh, ended up being a voiceover artist myself. As far as influences go you go through a lot of different stages you know, when I was a little kid I was really obsessed with Gary Cooper I was obsessed with Jimmy Cagney those were my two favorites you know about the time I hit my teenage years as far as actors go, I, it, 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 James Dean. It was all about James Dean and it was all about Marlon Brando. And then one day I went to a, um, I went to a, a movie theater in Brooklyn and I saw a movie called Mean Streets. You know, I had no idea who Martin Scorsese was or Robert De Niro. And when I, I walked out of that theater, I mean, I was blown away by what I saw. And I, I kind of became obsessed with, the, you know, with Robert. I just loved him. And I actually went back into the theater. I got myself a job as an usher and for the entire time the movie ran. And then when the movie ended, I quit. Um, you know, so it was really amazing, you know, when it suddenly, eight, nine years later, I got to star in a movie with Robert, you know. And 
And since then, it, you know, it just keeps growing. There, there was a phase where Robert Duval was my favorite. You know, I, I, I think he's one of the greatest actors that ever lived. And, and, and I always had an obsession with him as well. So it, it keeps growing, you know. That's the beauty of life. It just keeps on growing. Superheroes can't compare with real life heroes. Uh, you know, we may build them up to a certain degree that the, the, they seem like gods to us, but the real life hero, there are so many of them during our lifetime, uh, and I can name you 20 or 30, and uh, the, the list would be endless. But no one can compare to a real life hero, no matter how much we build up our uh, beloved superheroes. My real hero in, in, in life was my grandfather. He came over from Italy and worked very hard. Um, and my parents divorced when I was four years old. So that was my mother's father. And he raised help, helped very much to raise my sister and I. And also my grandma, his, his uh, my nana. Um, they were real heroes to me. They gave us so much love. And you know, when I got older, I realized um, they didn't have to do all they did. Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama is definitely a one-man army. And he's a great inspiration. Another one is Bruce Lee, although he passed. And it's sad that um, he didn't see it coming in this way. That so much of, of this business is about power and hype. And between power and hype, what's real can get lost unless you stay real yourself. So, but I do count him as, as one of my heroes. My third hero is Jimi Hendrix. So, probably the only group of heroes you ever hear: Jimi Hendrix, Dalai Lama, and Bruce Lee together. But Jimi Hendrix was another one who absolutely carried on in his own fashion without listening. He didn't ask permission to do what he did. He was who he was, and, and I would hope that more young people would, would feel that way about what they believe and what they do. Hello. Hi. Just beginning at this point, because I've only had a couple of episodes come on, and I haven't really been outside of Atlanta much yet. So this is kind of the first uh, experience that I'm having. So that applause is not for me. <laughs> We're about to go into the uh, panel for The Walking Dead. Sounds like he's reading off my entire resume. It's like uh, an extended family. I think everyone gets along super well. I, I haven't had the pleasure of working with you, and I'm, you know, you're great, you're fantastic, and it's going to be fun. I'm so, we're all part of the same family, it's just that some of us are in the bone orchard. <laughs> and I'm one that's in the bone orchard. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a very similar experience to what, to what you're describing. I, 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 was, I was immediately embraced by... Um, by all of the cast members on the show, and uh, they, they made me feel uh, safe enough to risk just about anything. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't get laughed at, you know, when the camera turned off. So um, it, it was empowering in a way um, how their generosity towards me and what, what it made me feel like, you know. Uh, it took the intimidation factor way down because it's you know you're coming onto a massive rolling juggernaut of a show, you know, and people know the you know the dialogue of the characters in and out and backwards and forwards, and they can describe what Walker bit who in what scene of what season, you know. So, um, but then going and being in the actual environment, which is it's kind of like a cocoon of creativity, which is um, and and uh, it was very safe and and, and uh, empowering, yeah. Herschel kind of started out as a little bit of a character with a, with a, with a lot of gray in terms of a barn full of walkers, you know. <laughs> but yet, you know, you became the moral compass of the show. Uh, what was that journey like as an actor to kind of be a guy who had a lot of secrets to someone who was basically the guy that Rick went to to make sure he was doing the right thing? Well, don't forget about Dale. Uh, Jeffrey DeMond was... Right, you kind of took Dale's role when right. he passed away. Yeah, he or was... was he yeah, let's hear it for Dale. Uh, Herschel's first season, I think he was a little... Uh, 
a little naive on a lot of issues. Uh, in, in one of the first scenes that I had, we were talking about the Black Plague and we were talking about uh, polio and we were talking about HIV and with Rick and Herschel, we were talking about that on the front porch. And Herschel believed that there was, there had always been a cure and that mankind got its ass kicked for a while, but then it always rebounded. So that was kind of his position. And I think in episode eight, when uh, the walkers came out of the barn and Shane kind of laid it out the way it was, uh, he opened his eyes a little bit and he got drunk. So <laughs> Uh, Seth, I, I think one of the unique things about you coming onto the show is not just your character because we do a little cute, you know, I asked the audience before, nobody trusts you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting that a lot. Yeah. Do I feel like a superhero because of what I did overseas? Uh, no. Uh, I was one of many. And uh, I wasn't a soldier. I was, I was one of many medics. It was my job to take care of soldiers, marines, airmen, um, squids, all of the above. So, uh, man, those guys are the heroes. I was just there to patch them up when they need be. Growing up, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I, when I, my senior year of high school, I decided I wanted to join the military, go and travel and see things. Uh, I've been to Afghanistan. And uh, just, you know, we share that connection. So it's, it's dope to have someone you grew up looking up to, and now you know you've been to the same places, you've been, uh, you've traveled to the same places, seen some of the same things. My longest tour was in Kuwait. Um, I mean, without getting graphic, right, right. right. As a medic, um, those are kind of moments that need to stay between the dock and, and the soldier, or the airman, or the marine. Um, yeah, I just saw a lot of bravery. You know, I saw I saw 18-year-old boys uh, become men, and I saw uh, grown men break down and cry. Um, forgive the language, but that's that's for real. That's how it really is. Um, and I just. Just the utmost respect, you know. Too many moments to count, and not many of them that I would share outside of people like yourself. So, man. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Wow. Like 1930s suits? That's right. Oh, how fun. You guys have an order of preference for introduction? I don't care. The, uh, Karen, Austin, or Austin, Karen, Dave, and me, or me, then Dave. If you guys need water, it's down, yeah. Whatever works. Or all of us at once. You guys need water. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's going to have questions to ask? Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll only answer one today. question. One question. Collectively. What is the meaning of life? Oh, uh, That's going to take a minute. That's going to take a minute. Cockney. Cockney. Okay. <laughs> sausages are moldy. 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 It's a cookney. Cool it's a cookney cool sausage. That's it's right. moldy. <laughs> these sausages are moldy. Whereas the queen would say, I believe these sausages are rather moldy. Moldy. Yes. Yes. Moldy. And it might yes, have to have life. It's yes. 42. Yes. 42. Oh, that's, that's your Michael Caine. That's the answer to that. That's Michael Caine. That's Michael Caine. Oh, it is Michael Caine. 42. Very well, found a culture. One of my favorite lines. Who could do it? Who could do it? All right, so Zordon, what should we do? What should we do? Uh, well, I think we need to morph to the command center and take care of business. Let's keep it real. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Mordon said so. Mordon right. said so. Yeah. That was moldy sausage moldy and Zordon. Mordon. 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 Mordor. 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 You know, I'm my thing is, all of our shows. is it Zordon never even thanked Alpha. No, he, he didn't. He never said thank you. No, and, he and never. What is Zordon your response, Zordon? Zordon. Zordon. That's because Zordon uh, loved Alpha. But couldn't express it. But couldn't express it. it. You know what? Express it. We have I've a got very... a problem too. Yeah. Because in the movie, they yeah. never the Rangers never thanked Aisha for That's kicking true. Ivanus in the balls. That's true. Never did. And so now here we are with <laughs> quite the dilemma. We have Zordon and Alpha Five. Drama, Lord, what would the Queen say? And then Aisha with no thanks and no love. So, yeah. what's going to happen next week, ladies and gentlemen? Well, I think we need to solve that with a Zordon Alpha Buddy Road movie. We need Buddy a Road. Zordon Alpha <laughs> intervention. That's right. But Zordon and Alpha should go to Vegas. That's right. Yes. Ah, it could be good. Hi, yeah. Zordon, we've spent our last dime. <laughs> Use the power coin. Zordon, we've spent our nest egg. <laughs> And then in walks the showgirls. That's right. Yeah. Cut screen.
it on himself, David Fielding! Jordan! 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 Never mind, he's here. I know that uh, I get questions about Zordon and Alpha 5 all the time, so <laughs> let's, let's hear some action. What you guys got? I actually have a question for Austin. Okay. I know like you were um, doing the med tech and, and you went overseas as well. What made you decide to come back to action? Good question. It wasn't exactly what went through my mind at the time. Um, I had, uh, I've had a pretty good career as a paramedic. Uh, I've worked in and out of firehouses all around the D.C. area. I started as a volunteer uh, EMT, got my EMT basic, and then I went through EMT intermediate all the way up to EMT paramedic. And then I got other specialized trainings in tactical operations, and uh, I ended up overseas, and I worked over there for years. And I came back April 1 this year. Before I came back, I was talking to my buddy Walter Jones, and uh, I was on the Kuwaiti-Iraqi border. And uh, I was on comms, and we were just chatting, and uh, I said, you know, I think I need a break from bullets and band-aids and, you know, the Middle East. And he said, you should come back because the fans would, would be bananas to see the original, as he puts it, leader. <laughs> One show has turned into, like, shows already being booked through 2016. I have three new movies in the works. I, I had no intention of coming back to acting, but apparently it had the intention of making me. Zordon, there's trouble in Angel Grove! Summon the Power Rangers! Are you ready? Ready. One, two, three... It's Rodney Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Zordon. Much love. Well, of course, when I was a little boy, I went to every movie I could get to. The very first film I ever saw was When Worlds Collide. And I was meant to see it. Uh, my father came home and said, we can't do it. And I said, why? And he said, because all the cinemas are shut because King George VI has died. And it, 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 it upset me that the king had been so ungrateful as to die when I was meant to be going to the cinema. And it took me <laughs> some time to get over that. When the cinemas did open again, I did go and see When Worlds Collide. Which was not a terribly good film, now that I think about it, but a lot of fun. We all need superheroes, but my superheroes would be creatures of mythology. I mean, Arthur, um, Drake, the great English pirates of the Navy and things like that. Um, but we do need uh, we, we do need Indiana Jones and uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and other people. I, today I met another professional archaeologist who said, "Look, I have to tell you, the reason that I became an archaeologist was because of Indiana Jones." And I must have met about 150, 160 professional archaeologists. Uh, all who say the same thing. They then hasten to add, well, of course it's not, it's not the way we do archaeology. Uh, Indy and I are representatives of the loot and scoot school of archaeology rather than systematic, you know, organized, careful excavation, non-intrusive examination. It really isn't just about me. It's actually well expressed in a, in a couplet by Dr. Johnson. The drama's laws, the drama's patrons give. And we who live to please, must please to live. It should be engraven on every actor's heart, or on every actor's ceiling that he stares at.